Uh, hi there, thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing some remote sensing using ArcGIS today. Uh, this video is a response to a couple of questions from my viewers with regards to how to estimate the land surface temperature using the Landsat 8 data. Uh, so uh, what we're going to be using today is uh, the thermal band and the NDVI for that study area. I do have my NDVI calculated already. If you do not uh, know how to calculate NDVI, you can watch a video of mine uh, titled Atmospheric Correction and Band Rationing. And I have my band 11, which corresponds to the thermal band, and band 10, which also corresponds to the thermal band in different wavelengths. And um, the first thing I did was I went to the USGS website actually to learn how to convert my digital numbers to radians which is the very first step to go and secondly convert my radiance to at satellite brightness temperature using this formula so the k2 and the k1 the coefficient factors they are given in the metadata file so when you download your landsat data you will have a, an mtl file which is the metadata file and every conversion uh, factor number you need will be in that file and this is mine here and um, um, this formula gives you the brightness temperature that's been received by the satellite at the time that your image was taken so this is not really uh, uh, the temperature on ground this is just uh, the temperature at satellite so we're gonna go two steps further after calculating this to derive the actual ground surface temperature uh, it's gonna be a fairly long video so I'll suggest you go grab coffee maybe um, so after doing this uh, by the way this uh, is gonna give us degrees in Kelvin uh, degrees Kelvin and I want the result to be degrees Celsius so I'm gonna use a conversion factor which is 272.15 to convert from degrees Kelvin to degrees Celsius and after we do this uh, we're gonna go on to calculate the land surface temperature and this is the formula for that by the way there are several ways of calculating uh, or estimating the land surface temperature there are different algorithms to do that like the single window the split window and this is the one I'm using here which is I think it's the single window I think uh, the formula says BT BT here stands for the at satellite temperature uh, which is what we are going to be calculating from this formula and um, divided by 1 which is a constant plus W here stands for the wavelength of immediate radiance at 11.5 wavelength which corresponds to band 10 in the Landsat 8 data and we're going to multiply that by the at satellite temperature we're going to calculate and divide it by P P is all of this story here blah blah and this is what P resulted to 14,380 multiplied by the log number of E E here is the emissivity, land surface emissivity people do calculate this using the land cover classification or NDVI and I'm using the NDVI which is this one so this is the formula to calculate the land surface emissivity and the formula is uh, the squared of NDVI minus NDVI mean divided by NDVI max minus NDVI mean and it's going to give me proportion of vegetation and I'm going to put that into this formula which is finally going to give me the land surface emissivity which is going to be then required for this unit here to calculate the land surface temperature so let's get started so back to ArcGIS uh, most of the operations is going to be done using raster calculator my first step is to convert my digital numbers to radians for the thermal band so the first one is ml the ml here stands for the multiplicative band it's in the metadata file and the q card is the actual digital number of the thermal band plus al al stands for the additive band here so i'm just going to go to my uh, metadata file my metadata the radiance multiplicative band for band 10 is this and i'm going to multiply this by the actual digital number and add this number here 0.1 so back to my rust calculator it's 0 0.0003342 multiplied by my bar 10 which is the actual digital number plus 0 0.1 and i'm just going to rename this to bond 10 radians and i'm just going to okay that 
and it's going to give me a new raster layer for the radiant soft band 10. Uh, I'm just going to perform the same operation on the band 11. So since I want to do just basically the same thing, I can just go to geoprocessing results and it brings up my previous executions, raster calculator, and I'm just going to replace band 10 with uh, band 11. These factors are basically the same if you look at them in the metadata file. And I'm just going to rename this to band 11 radians and I'm going to OK that. And once it's done, I'm done with my first step, which is conversion of digital numbers to radians. And I can now go straight up to my second step, which is converting radians to at set light brightness temperature. So K2 divided by the log number of K1 divided by my radians plus 1. And I'm going to subtract it by 272.15, which is the conversion factor from Kelvin to Celsius. So I'm just going to look for the K1 and the K2 in my metadata file. So this is my K2 for the band 10. K2 for band 10 is this one. I'm just going to copy and paste it. You be careful while copying and pasting so that you don't paste in the wrong thing. Bring up my last calculator. My K2 divided by the log number of K1. My K1 is this. Just copy and paste it there. And divide it by my band 10 radians plus 1. I'm just going to subtract 272.15. So I'm converting the degrees Kelvin to degrees Celsius. I'm just going to rename this to uh, band 10 sat temp for band 10 set light temperature and I'm going to OK that and hopefully I should get a new raster file uh, with the actual temperature that's been received at the set light during the time of the image. So if my temperature ranges from 23.5 to 39.1. I'm just going to repeat the same process for my band 11. Uh, so geo processing results and um, bring up my results again and my K1 and K2 they've changed for the band 10 and band 11 so I'm just going to do a new copy and paste again so copy my K2 for band 11 and replace it in the formula and I'm gonna copy my K1 for the K11 for my band 11 sorry uh, and replace it in the formula and uh, change the band 10 radians to band 11 radians and this conversion factor remains the same and I'm just going to rename it to band 11 set light temperature and I'm going to OK that and here I now have uh, the two uh, at set light brightness temperature for both band 10 and band 11 uh, some people just work with them differently. What I like to do is combine both of them and average it. So I use the average of the two bands. And what I use for that is the cell statistics tool. You just search for it, it comes up. And um, I'm just going to drag in both of my satellite temperatures for band 10 and 11. I'm going to rename it to uh, satellite temp band. 10, 11, and there are several overlay statistics here. I'm going to stick with the mean because I want to get the average, and I'm just going to OK that. And here we go. This is my uh, satellite temperature data, and I can go ahead and work with these in several kind of modeling and uh, do all sorts of stuff with it. Uh, my data ranges from 23.0 to 37.93 degrees Celsius. Uh, what we're going to do now is go a bit further to calculate uh, the land surface emissivity and finally calculate the actual ground surface temperature for this image at the time that the satellite took this image. So back to my formula again. What we now don't have in this formula is the E, which is the land surface emissivity. And this is the formula for it, so we're going to be needing the NDVI to do this. So I'm just going to go back to ArcGIS. Uh, scroll down to my NDVI, these are my NDVI and I'm going to bring up the rust calculator so if you look at it, it's the square so first thing we want to do is bring up the square function here uh, so square of the NDVI 
minus NDVI mean and this is the NDVI mean so it's going to be minus minus 0 0.05 which is going to be minus times minus plus so plus 0 0.0587 384 divided by I'm going to look into the formula again NDVI max minus NDVI mean uh, which is uh, the NDVI max is 0 0.6 so it's this so it's uh, uh, 0 0.608759 minus NDVI mean, which is this, I'm just going to copy and paste it to make sure we're doing the same thing. And um, I'm going to rename this to prop veg for proportion of vegetation. Uh, we're going to need it to calculate the actual uh, land surface emissivity. So bring up the rust calculator one more time, look at my formula, copy and paste my formula. Just paste it in the rust calculator. So here where it says PV, PV stands for proportion of vegetation. So I'm going to multiply it by proportion of vegetation. And finally, I'm going to name it LSE, which is land surface emissivity. And I'm going to OK that. So now I have my all my uh, data I'm going to need for this final formula, which is this. And this is going to give us the land surface temperature. So basically, this is our last step. So I'm just going to bring up our, our GIS raster calculator, and it's going to be uh, the at satellite brightness temperature divided by one. So it's uh, at satellite brightness temperature for band 10, band 10 satellite temperature uh, divided by one plus. W, which stands for wavelength of emitted radiance at 11.5. I said it corresponds to band 10, so the actual band 10 without any correction. So band 10 uh, multiplied by brightness temperature again, multiplied by band 10 satellite temperature, divided by P, which is this value 14,380 divided by 14,380 and close it and multiply it by the log number of land surface emissivity log number of land surface emissivity so it's going to be 1 plus by 10 multiply it by I'm just going to put in some parentheses here and uh, this should give us uh, the ground surface temperature for the time that this image was taken. So I'm just going to rename it uh, band 10 LST and I'm just going to make sure everything is okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, that. And finally, we now have our band 10 land surface temperature, which is this. So basically, we're done. Um, going to give it a new color ramp from hot to cold, cold to hot rather. Uh, so my Bantan has a temperature on the ground for the day that this image was taken which is probably time of... Uh, the sun elevation was about 49 degrees on the horizon so it's probably in the morning. Uh, I really don't know how to calculate this kind of stuff. So. <laughs> So and that's it, uh, if you look into the metadata file just to look at the time that the image was taken and all kind of stuff just to be sure of what data you're working with and uh, you can repeat this process for the band 11 and just use the cell statistics to average the band 10 and band 11 for the land surface temperature and you can work with that. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did uh, comment or like, uh, thank you very much.